Buen día. Buenos días. And, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, continuing English. Uh, it's great to be here. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, you all for being here and thank the organizers for uh, the invitation. Uh, today, I wanted to give you a, an overview of how the Brazilian startup ecosystem is doing and is growing so, so far. And also, talk a little bit about Startup Brazil, what, is, what this program is and what we have been doing uh, up there in Brazil. Uh, first, a little bit about me. Uh, I've, I've been working with startups and startup uh, ecosystems for a long time. I started uh, coding when I was 12, started my first company when I was 16. And since then, I've worn uh, several different hats in this ecosystem. I've been an entrepreneur several times, uh, angel investor, accelerator, educator, uh, policy uh, maker, and, and a VC as well. So uh, I'll try, uh, I think I have s some interesting views from different points of views uh, from different actors in this, in this uh, ecosystem. Well, what is Startup Brazil? It's the national program uh, that aims to foster the ecosystem for early stage startups by acceler accelerating uh, their growth. Uh, it's an initiative of the Ministry of Science and Technology of Brazil, and it's a public-private partnership. So uh, what we do is we select uh, 100 startups per year that gets both, both funding and uh, uh, an acceleration, and, and they get to be part of an acceleration program in Brazil uh, that gives them mentorship, office space, business services, market access, and international connections uh, as well. And, uh, the money that, in, that is invested in those startups comes both from the government and from the accelerators. Um, technically, the program, the uh, public money is equity free, but in order to have access to that money, you have to come up with a deal with an accelerator and they do take equity. So the program itself uh, takes equity from, from the startups. And we're open also for international startups uh, up to 25% of the companies that we select might be uh, uh, international startups coming from foreign uh, markets. Uh, those are uh, our partners. Uh, we now have 12 accelerators that are working with us from all over Brazil. Uh, those are private accelerators from different regions and some of them focus on uh, specific verticals of the, of the market. We have. Uh, accelerators that work with social businesses, we have accelerators that work with hardware, uh, uh, mobile only, and, and, and so forth. Um, and what we try to do is to offer not only money and acceleration, but also provide them with uh, networking and learning events. So we try to gather all the companies from all the accelerators at least twice a year. Uh, and we have two uh, major events, one when they start, which, which you call welcome aboard, and also the demo days. Uh, we have international hubs in partnerships uh, uh, with the uh, Apex Brazil, which is the export agency promotion of Brazil. Uh, so we have an office in San Francisco with co-working space and, uh, and lots of services that help the startups. And now also in New York and Singapore through a partnership with Softex, which is, um, Market access, so basically we get our startups to talk to large companies through business fairs. And also uh, we take the best companies and we open doors at large corpor corporations and at the government for them. And I think this is one of the greatest uh, value that we can add as a startup Brazil for some of those startups. We have companies that are doing software for education and that are now talking to the Ministry of Education in Brazil and, the, and uh, uh, bringing their technology to thousands of students through connections that were made uh, by Startup Brazil. Um, and also we have our demo days, not only in Brazil, but also in San Francisco. Last year we did one here in Santiago in partnership with uh, Startup Chile and with the collaboration of the Brazilian uh, consulate uh, here in Chile. Uh, and well, just to give you a few figures of the first three rounds of companies uh, that we have uh, supported, around 9,100 entrepreneurs were impacted 
2.2 thousand uh, startups, and we've selected uh, and accelerated 150 uh, startups. Actually, the bats, they overlap. So the first group is finishing the acceleration process. The second is in the middle of the process. We just selected the third batch. And we have applications open for the fourth batch right now until October uh, 24. Uh, and just to give you some initial results, uh, we have already surpassed private investments that were raised by the companies that we support uh, uh, if you compare with the public investment that we did as from, from Startup Brazil. So our companies have raised more money than the government has invested in them in, in just less than a year. And that's, that's great news. Uh, actually, we, uh, results are better than we expected in terms of how the companies are being able to grow and to be attractive for the venture capital uh, industry. Uh, in Brazil, and we have ev even best news. Uh, the second uh, uh, batch of startups uh, is even better. We have been monitoring uh, their their growth, th how much revenue they can generate, and uh, the, the user that they that they have, jobs generation, and all the metrics are much better uh, at the second batch compared to the first one, which is already generating pretty good results. So. We're, we're excited about, about it. Uh, and well, as I said, applications are now open for the fourth batch until October 24. So I'd like to invite you all to spread the word out. And uh, we're super open and happy to, to receive startups and entrepreneurs from all over the world, and especially from Latin America, uh, to be part of the program. Um, and another in invitation where we'll have our uh, first national demo day, where we'll be showcasing companies from the, fourth, uh, the first batch early November uh, in Sao Paulo, in, in the 6th of uh, November. Uh, that week, uh, we'll be having several startup-related events uh, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. And I just heard that Seeds Demo Day is going to be in the, in the week right after. So it's, it might be a good time for you if you want to be in Brazil and understand the, the market there this week is, is a great week to be there and to be part of, I, I think there are 10 to 12 major uh, events going on that week in Brazil. And you're more, more than welcome to come meet the startups and, and meet us in the program in Sao Paulo. Well, now the main part of the presentation, which is talking about the Brazilian ecosystem. Um, when I I, I, it took me a long time, I would say several years, to try to understand or to, to come up with a model or a framework of what are the main pillars that drive uh, an ecosystem. And I came up with these four uh, main ones. So we have to, if you want to, to foster an ecosystem, you have to think about education. That means talent, funding, culture, and the regulatory and legal uh, uh, issues. And what I wanted to do is to walk through those uh, pillars and give you an overview of how Brazil is doing and what has happened, especially over the last four years in Brazil, where you had a lot of change and growth in the, in the ecosystem there. And I hope that this can give you, you know, a, a eventually a path for some of, of the ecosystems that are still growing or some insights, uh, let's go. Well, first let's talk about funding. And well, this is the way that I uh, like to divide the, the different stages of uh, investments. Uh, the figures would vary a lot, but that's how we uh, would classify in Brazil up to 500K would be an angel round or, or the seed capital venture and private equity. And if we, look at this and try to fill this uh, space with the money that is available in Brazil for every stage of investment. Let's take a look at 2010. We had a lot of money for private equity, actually much more than the investors were able to, uh, to invest. They couldn't find companies. We, we had more than 20, $22 billion in private equity uh, funds and some growth and nearly nothing 
no angels, very few uh, seed uh, 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 funds in early stage. And what happened in two years, especially with uh, interest rates that went, went down and the growth that our economy had experimented, and we were lucky because we were growing while the developing world was facing the economic crisis. So part of this money went down uh, uh, to growth and early stage and started to see some angel activity and some accelerators that started back in 2012. I would say that in 2012 there will be two or three active accelerators in Brazil. So, and this moment, movement evolved really fast. If you look at today, we have more than 50 accelerators in Brazil and 72 funds or family offices that are active in the early stage. That's a tremendous change if you compare it with only two years uh, uh, ago. Uh, and while there's been some, some movement and some, com some gaps, I think the start of Brazil has played an important role here because we match investments with the accelerators. And it's not just only about startup Brazil's money itself, but we have to uh, bring out new accelerators and not all the ones that have postulated to be part of startup Brazil made it, but some of them are still there. Uh, and lots of the accelerators that there are, are our partners also accept companies that are not being selected through Startup Brazil, so the impact is much bigger. And yeah, there's still a main gap, especially when you look at early stage series A and, and B. But the good news is that this is a new problem. So two years ago, everybody would be complaining about the lack of angel investors, and now they're complaining about the lack of series A, Will we be able to have money to keep following on all those good startups that we have right now? So, well, it's kind of exciting thinking about the new problems that we have and how we're going to solve them. Um, and while exits are still a huge challenge too, and everybody is, you know, thinking about five years from now, we'll need to find exits for this money so that we have this cycle going on and renewing. And we don't have a strong stock market still. And most Brazilian companies are not used to acquire others in order to innovate. So it's something that we have to, to push forward to. Um, I think the major drivers for this change were macroeconomics, so fall of interest rate, and the growth of the average purchasing power of the raising middle class. You probably all heard of this change in Brazil in the past few years. Uh, this had created a big internal market, which means big opportunity for anyone who wants to become an entrepreneur and take that opportunity, especially using technology to grow faster. Uh, lots of public investments from different players like the Development Bank, FINAP, and, and the Ministry of Science and Technology, they have been funded dozens of venture capital funds over the past eight years, and this had created the first uh, step of the ecosystem. Um, and also, as you may imagine, government also creates lots of um, challenges and, and problems. Uh, I probably, well, let me pause for a second and ask you, who here is a government official or works for government somehow? Okay, not, not many of you. So, uh, let's say entrepreneurs. Okay, and those were not our probably supporters of the ecosystem somehow. Okay, mostly <laughs> entrepreneurs. Cool. Uh, yeah, well, we should take this presentation back to your countries and talk to you to government about this. Uh, I think this had worked really well, but it also had created several challenges and problems. I was speaking. Uh, with who? Uh, about foreign investment, so m most of these funds have difficulties on having their backed companies getting global because it means they will have to incorporate elsewhere and acquire and, and receive funds from foreign investors that don't want to bring the money to Brazil. And so those guys, uh, they don't like it. So uh, we're starting to face some other different problems of 
what it takes when the government takes uh, um, a role by being the, the main uh, initial uh, funder <coughs> of these funds. So um, there was a rise of angel investors for sure, driven also by the rise of the upper middle class. We had more wealthy people in Brazil and more people willing to make those investments. And of course, there's a cultural shift uh, uh, going on as well. I'll, I'll talk more uh, about that later. Uh, well, right now, actually. So I think there are several trends uh, in terms of culture. Some of them are not just Brazilian, but well, the wise are here and the millennials are coming. And this means a lot. They were born and raised connected and they're now, at least the wise, are uh, getting into positions where they have some power uh, and uh, management power to, to, to change. Uh, they're more driven by purpose. So if you look at you know, previous generations, the baby boomers or the WAC X generations that were just worried about making wealth and be protected from war problems. Now, our relationship with work as a Y generation member myself is, is different. So people are willing you know, to, to, to make difference, to impact. Um, collaboration is, is on their DNA, also because of the technology and the culture of collaboration the technology has empowered us. Uh, and well, more independent and more autonomous, you don't need nothing but the internet to do a lot of things. And this is an entrepreneurial lifestyle. And this means that startup is kind of cool right now. Um, so it all started with you know, Zuckerberg, which is this young, cool billionaire that started something amazing that everybody's using all over, over the world, and he's now a billionaire. Uh, and then in Brazil, we could see lots and lots and lots of press about being digital and startups and digital entrepreneurship. And this is uh, Jonas Maha, probably the Brazilians know. This is a, a famous Brazilian actor and he's the main star of one of the TV soup operas that are broadcasted national, nationally right now. And he is kind of a Steve Jobs who created and reinvented technology in the world. Uh, he used to live in the Valley and he went back to Brazil to start his, uh, to grow his company in Brazil and help other entrepreneurs. So can you imagine that this is being uh, played on TV for millions of Brazilians right now? So, and this means a lot. Uh, entrepreneurship is now a theme that, that an average Brazilian would know something about, or at least we would have heard. We have lots of you know, magazine covers and TV talking about entrepreneurship. And this is something different that we didn't have before. Uh, entrepreneurship is cool. This is Jonas pitching. He pitches a lot. He has a porch. <laughs> He's a billionaire. Everybody wants to work with him, for him. And also, it's a super opera, so there are lots of intrigues and <laughs> things like that. But uh, more successful senior entrepreneurs are now willing to you know, re retrofeed and give back to the ecosystem. So especially in the past, two, three years, we started to have a more, a wider mentorship network or mentors network all over Brazil. And we started to see those guys who made their successes uh, uh, appearing. Because there's also this culture, cultural thing, and I think Latin America probably has a lot of that. I don't know if it's, it, if it's because of security, of, of safety of the place, so if you're rich, you don't want to show off yourself or you would be kidnapped or something. Uh, and also maybe a Catholic thing which relates duty and wealthiness. <laughs> but uh, failure used to be an issue in Brazil and I think it still is, but success is an issue too. If you're too successful, you don't want to talk a lot about that or you know, be recognized as a successful that much. And this is also a, a problem. And I think that this cultural shift is changing that as well. And we're empowering a more collaborative environment where successful people can be part of, of this new ecosystem and help others. Uh, and so people are less ashamed of assuming they're rich. It's cool to be an investor too. 
Um, there are some challenges. Brazilians think they need to think beyond its borders. So Brazil is too big, and we are the only Portuguese-speaking country in Latin America. And this, so we became isolated, and we only think about our own internal market. Most of Brazilian entrepreneurs, and we need to to change that and to think bigger, uh, and also to be more open for foreign for, for this collaboration with our neighbors as, as well. Well, I hope to, you know. Uh, evolve on that a little bit here, <laughs> getting to know each of you uh, uh, better. Well, failure is still an issue. Uh, you don't want to be close to someone who has failed. Uh, it's like a bad mark. So we have to change that as well. And I think it has also something to do with the regulations. If you fail, you would face a lot of trouble in your life and getting your life back, reestablishing your credit and, 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 and so on. Um, collaborations, you need to become more consistent and constant. It's evolving a lot. And we are living a kind of a hype right now of startup. It's cool, but it's also dangerous. So we have to manage that moment in order to take the, the best out of it. And well, sometimes, in the middle of a hype, you have lot, lots of people that, that is just surfing the wave with not exactly the right motivations and you, you have to deal with that. And as a young entrepreneur, you might not be able to differentiate who is really supportive for, for you or not. And uh, that's a problem too. Uh, but the good thing is that now we are starting to have success stories. I just wanted to point out Easy Taxi, which is a company that I've uh, I saw this guy pitching at a, his startup weekend three and a half years ago with just an idea, and now he is in 36 countries and 200 cities all over the world, and his company's valuation is around 1 billion uh, reais, actually. Uh, but, well, it's quite remarkable, and it, it, it has happened in just three and a half years. And some others are following and starting to, you know, to uh, become successful cases. Exits are still an issue, as I told, but we're starting to see a lot of good startups coming out of this <coughs> new uh, era of Brazilian entrepreneurship. Uh, now, education. Well, Brazil has never graduated as many high qualified people. Uh, well, this scale is not good here, because this curve is more. Uh, more J-curved, as, as we all like, right? Uh, but so the number has doubled in less than 10 years. And this means a lot. We have much more qualified people and talent available for us, a workforce. But uh, uh, quality of that education is, a, is an issue as well. Uh, and the thing is, more than half of those students want to start their own businesses. Can you imagine? It's completely different. It, it has to do with that cultural shift. 10 years ago, this would be, I don't know, maybe five to 10. And now everybody's thinking about this as a possibility. And this means a, a shift also between what I call entrepreneurship by necessity. And Brazilians are usually good at that. We are always ranked high in the entrepreneurial rankings in the world. We have lots of entrepreneurship. But usually, by necessity, you, you have to become an entrepreneur as a way to survive. And now, we start to see qualified people that have options. And we have a lot of job opportunities right now in, in Brazil. And they decide to become an entrepreneur because they see an opportunity. This also changes a lot of things. But well, most universities don't offer learning experience to prepare uh, and form uh, entrepreneurs. So the same research says that you know, more than half have never studied or seen anything related to entrepreneurship at university. So, well, we have to change that. The good news is that entrepreneurial education is, has arrived and is growing dramatically, not necessarily by academia or by formal means. So we have a bunch or maybe dozens of startup educational programs and events that are going on and growing. Well, none of those existed five years ago. And you have 
Next and Startup Weekend and Seeds, they're here, and Startup Rio, uh, Startup Farm that I was uh, probably uh, uh, one of the founders uh, four years ago, uh, and many other events and educational programs, they are trying to uh, give tools to those entrepreneurs to, to run their business. I'm just picking one example, Startup Weekend, probably you're familiar with. I like Startup Weekend because it's a great way to start uh, that entrepreneurial scene. Uh, we had one in 2010, and well, this is how we, uh, how we grew. Uh, we had 54 already confirmed uh, in Brazil, and, and up Brazil is expect to have 60 this year. I think it's probably a bit more, and they're planning more than 100 for next year, and I also think that it will overcome. If you see this curve, you start to figure out what is happening in Brazil in terms of how startup is trendy and people are willing to become entrepreneurs. Uh, and in the end, regulatory and legal system, well, we have some bad news. No major changes over the last four years. It's slightly easier to incorporate some few changes here and there. Uh, that's really tough because changing the regulatory environment, especially in a country like Brazil, which is just too big, too fragmented socially, lots of interests, you have to negotiate with Congress people, and well, it's a tough job. Uh, but well, some, we now have a very good Internet Bill of Act, the Arco Civil, which is a model for uh, the world. And there is uh, ensuring that the Internet must be transparent and have uh, what we call network neutrality, so nobody could take control over it. And well, that's important if, if you're a startup too. Um, and some almost good news. I mean, some good laws are being cooked, but it will take time. We still need tax simplification system for all small companies, tax incentives for angel investors. We don't have any. I was watching uh, uh, yesterday uh, the, the, the talk about what uh, Canada has, has done for uh, angel investors. Sounds like a, a great thing, and we need that in Brazil as well. CVM is our SEC. They still have to regulate crowdfunding, so equity crowdfunding is not legally allowed completely in Brazil. Um, and we, our taxation systems for foreign investors is a mess. So uh, we have lots of problems on attracting foreign investors to invest in Brazil. And what is happening is that our companies are attractive and our, the market is there, but everybody is, incorporated, is incorporating abroad and offshore uh, because of these this issues. So this is really you know, an issue that we have to address if you want to keep growing and evolving with the ecosystem. And well, to, fin to finalize, um, I think there's still a long journey to come, but definitely a lot of good things have happened in Brazil in the past four years. Uh, and I think it's, it's great to be able to share some of this news with you and also to learn from what is happening uh, uh, with you. I hope that we could exchange and generate some uh, learnings for, for both sides. Uh, density is extremely powerful. My, my uh, feeling is that we are reaching that tipping point of density where the ecosystem starts to grow by itself and the quality is increasing a lot. Uh, maybe not the average quality, but since we're having more and more startups we have more and more very good companies. Um, and well, this is, this is magic, <laughs> magic. Um, the main challenge I would say now for us is to develop uh, our ability or, uh, to, to produce exits, the liquidity of the market. Otherwise, we won't be able to keep this cycle going on. So the government has done a lot of investment in starting the market must to continue uh, fostering the, the, the cycle. Um, and I believe there's a lot of untapped potential for collaboration between Brazil and Latin America. I really do believe in that, that's why I'm here. And uh, if you're thinking about how to develop your ecosystem, and well, I've faced it, we have faced lots of those challenges. Some things are working really well, some are not. Some are not. We have uh, probably similar challenges 
Maybe you are facing some challenges that we had to face a few time ago. Few time ago, maybe you are more advanced in some of the points that we are uh, uh, having difficulties. So let's talk and 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 share and evolve our ecosystems. Uh, if you thinking about that and if you want to use that framework to understand your own ecosystem, come talk to me and you know let's make it happen. Uh, thank you very much and obrigado, muchísimas gracias and questions. Can can we take questions? Yes. Uh, is that working? Yes. Um, a question that I have for you and, and, and some of the other folks in the room representing different countries and startup initiatives. When I, I operated an incubator slash accelerator in the United States, still do. And yes, we found that the majority of our applicants were, we'll say, 20 somethings. But the second highest applications came from those over the age of 50. And I'm wondering, is that a trend? I don't see too many entrepreneurs here that are over, let's say, 30. Um, do you take in or have you seen applications from folks that might be a little bit older with more experience, with more maturity, and perhaps even their own capital to invest in their own companies? Uh. Th that's a great question, and yes, we're starting to see that trend. So the first group was in their 20s, as, as you just said, but the second has lots of senior entrepreneurs, but, and they're, they're collaborating with the younger. So many, many groups have both you know, young entrepreneurs and more uh, uh, experienced uh, uh, entrepreneurs who have been executives or senior executives and that are now uh, becoming entrepreneurs. And um, well, I, I can tell you that the most successful ones are the ones who can you know, have uh, both young and, and, and uh, older uh, uh, people involved.